Mom's ready to talk about some swashbuckling. Some swashbuckling. Hi, my name is Rachel, and today we're going to talk about Robin Hobb, the live ship series, and another book. About a year-ish and some change ago, I read the first book and the f and about 50% of the second book of Robin Hobb's Live Ship Trader series. Recently, I read something that reminded of all my personal favorite parts of it. It was not ships though, it was airships, which is my preference. So I'm here to tell you about pirates or pirate adjacent things. Mostly I'm here to compare Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb with Wanted by Shalana Medford and convince you to try one or both out. Hello, tis I editing Rachel and I forgot to say that I was not commissioned to read the Robin Hobb book but I was commissioned by the author of Wanted to read Wanted. So I just wanted to say that for full transparency but as per usual even though I'm commissioned by the author to read their book, it does not affect my rating at all. I maintain honesty with my audience. And that's it. Okay, back to the video. Bye. In Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb, which is part of her, I forget the universe she writes in, the Hobbiverse. It is part of the Assassin's Apprentice universe, but you do not have to read Assassin's Apprentice to read Live Ship Traders. There are ships made out of wizard wood, which is a sentient wood. Not just ships, though. There are other things made out of sentient things. Anyway, these ships are called live ships because the ship is alive. You guessed it. In book one, the live ship Vivacia is about to undergo her quickening and Althea, one of our main character, Althea Vestritz, her father is about to die. He's about to, he's about to kick it. And so they bring him on to the d deck of the ship because when he dies on the ship, the ship is going to quicken and then she is supposed to inherit the ship. Except... <laughs> Her father signed away her ship to her brother-in-law and her brother-in-law's name, shit you not, is fucking Kyle. <laughs> what the fuck is up, Kyle? No, what did you say, dude? What the fuck, dude? Step the fuck up, Kyle. Kyle Haven is the biggest piece of shit. There's also a pirate named Kenneth who's kind of a piece of shit most of the time, but like we allow it, but Kyle, Kyle gets no passes. But Althea Vestra is the one that I want to draw some comparisons to between Althea and our main character in Wanted by Shalana Medford. Song is our main character and she also comes from an affluent family like Althea Vestra. But Song is a queer woman who, like Althea, her mother has very high expectations of her. Live Ship Traders is more of a high fantasy in like the traditional sense, whereas Wanted is, is it gas lamp fantasy that has airships? Is that, is that the right term? I don't know. What do I know? I'm just a book reviewer. It's one of those. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit more about Ship of Magic um, because I've never talked about it on this channel and that's a shame. I should talk about it more. It's a good book. It's a really, it's a really solid four star fantasy. Um, this is a book from 1998, first in a trilogy of the live ship traders. So these live ships will only quicken when three members of a family uh, have died on board. So several families have these live ships and our family, the Vestrits, own a live ship called the Vivacia. She's about to undergo her quickening and the main dude of the Vestrit family is dying. <laughs> turns out that he signed away his ship that should have been his daughter's technically to his other daughter which means that her husband the piece of shit Kyle what the fuck is up Kyle gets to keep the ship there's also other ships called um the Paragon who went mad and drowned his own crew and then uh, became what is it called when you get when you get like stuck on land he can't sail he's stuck and he's also blind and on a deserted beach and he's very lonely it's very sad you feel very bad for him and there's a lot of like politicking and stuff but Althea is really like who I feel Althea and Kenneth are kind of like the main the main characters for me at least that's how I felt reading it and they are <sighs> Kenneth is a pirate Althea is a sailor <laughs> She, she gets into some messes. She's a sailor. Let's talk about Wanted. The synopsis says Songold is a brat as the only child of the richest, most influential family in Andalise. Could she really be anything else? Unfortunately for her senator father, she also has an eye for the ladies, which is why no one but Song knows. One stupid mistake later and Song flees in a panic rather than bring sh shame on her family. She leaves her home and sits stale on a so stolen skyship. So yeah, but it's a lot more than that. Both of these books are character-driven stories that feature a young woman 
main character from an affluent family in a, in a society that has like you know class struggle who cannot meet the expectations of her family set out for her so she runs off to a ship in one case a live ship and, the, and then not a live ship and then one case uh, a sky ship and both of them disguise themselves as boys to join a crew there they learn to fight be self-sufficient and gain a you know a new sense of family so there is wizard wood in the live ship trader series and i love that um it's mm, i wish i could tell you more but i feel like if i tell you anything specific it's gonna spoil it basically it's a sentient wood ish and lots of things can be done with special sentient wood there is a similar type of substance in wanted as well it's not wood though it's called Pishing sorrow stone it's a special black metal and it goes under certain treatments and it turns silver and they call it sorrow stone because the substances they use to silver the blade cause severe burning to living things and the sorrow stone reacts as it can feel what's being done to it. The sort of like sentient object matter resource idea is criminally underrepresented in fantasy having a resource that people use to make things that has like sort of a, a sentient quality to it something that i love to see and i rarely see it it's obviously more represented in ship of magic than in wanted because sorrow stone is only used by this one particular character and told uh the main character about it whereas like in ship of magic it's a major player throughout the series and throughout basically all of the point of views but if that's an element that you like to see I would recommend reading Wanted. An element that's similar between the two that gets explored more is like girl runs off to ship and joins a crew disguising herself as a boy so she can hide her real identity in particular her affiliation to her actual family. These are done for two different reasons in these books and Althea is much more um <laughs> <laughs> uh, altruistic than Song is. Althea basically got like burned by her family so she was supposed to like inherit the live ship. They gave it to fuck ass Kyle. Fucking Kyle. Oh my god. She's out here running around dressed up like a boy just trying to do right. <laughs> um, Song is out here trying to be dressed up as a boy and doing wrong. <laughs> like right for her but probably not. Probably not morally okay. She kills a dude. <laughs> She's like learning to fight so that she can uh, save a friend she made at the beginning of the story. She's basically just like be gay do crime. She is in fact gay and while I love that I also didn't love how quickly she would like find herself attached to another girl. I guess it kind of makes sense given that she's never really given those opportunities to do that growing up the way that she did but every time a pretty girl crossed her path Song was like I'm ready to risk it all and did. Althea the on the other hand is definitely straight and has a thing for dudes. It's very actually she has a dynamic that's very like Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner which is you know the old staple for us bisexuals. There's a big theme uh, about like the family that you're born in doesn't be doesn't have to be the family that you keep especially in Wanted the found family aspect there particularly like the standard father that Song finds I loved I thought that that was such a great relationship and by the end the parts that were like meant to elicit a, an emotional response from me as a reader they did because the author did such a great job of cultivating that particular relationship in the book over like the course of it something I didn't like about Ship of Magic is it's so incredibly long in a way that does not do service to itself. It's actually why I DNF'd, like soft dnf the second book. It gets pretty exhausting honestly because Robin Hobb is such a long-winded writer and I feel like a lot could be easily condensed. What's written is not bad, it's just so much time for not like an even payoff. As I said, a lot could be condensed in my opinion. However, it is from 1998, so I think that that's just like a, like it's indicative of its time. The payoffs of things take so long and the audiobooks are not very enjoyable and they're like 24 hours long. Okay, where was I? I got interrupted because my neighbor's kid was running down this road screaming. <laughs> Bloody murder, so yikes. Okay. Okay. Robin Hobb's books are so long. The audiobooks are like 24 to 28 hours long and I don't enjoy the audiobook narrator. Those books really could use a full cast audio in my opinion. Although when do I not advocate for full cast audio? <laughs> Uh, with sound effects and a score. Make it a whole production. Come on, give the people what they want. The people is me. And it's just honestly not engaging as I would prefer in order to like have the, it's just so long for it to be just so not engaging. What happens isn't bad, it's just too long and it's not even with the payoff. I know that I keep 
saying that, but like the balance of it is off. I don't know how else to describe that. There were some things I didn't love about Wanted either. Uh, I'm a piggy bitch. <laughs> Shocker. Certain things were just not developed the way that I would have preferred. I mentioned the romantic relationships first song were underdone, um, whereas like the, the more like familial relationships um, were good, but her like platonic friendships I felt like, except with, I mean one guy's it was good, but he has feelings for her. The other dude, like the dude who helped her leave her family and then she, he ends up getting like taken by pirates. Um, it's just really underdone. Everything that happens in the beginning of the book I would say is just too quick. I think that it should have been done in like flashback format instead and that would have worked better. The reason that she left her family also, it happened way too fast. She almost kisses a girl or kissed a girl and then she's like oh shit my mother is going to find out and she just immediately dips like she gets terrified and just fucking dips there's no real like incident you don't really know that her parents reaction there's no you did this so now we're gonna do this and she's trying to avoid the this she escapes with her new friend they're on a skyship but then they're almost like immediately come upon by pirates and she ends up um for all intents and purposes falling off the ship and then her ima her magic kicks in and it saves her life and then we spend the rest of the book not knowing if that guy is dead or alive and she spends the majority of the book on adventures with like a crew trying to like find her true self um by being in their ranks and finding family within them and also she's dressed as a boy i think that the book should have started at the part where she convinces their captain to let her be part of the ship and like like she says you know let me be part of the ship help me find my friend and then we'll find this treasure that my friend knows how to get to and i think that the book should have started there and then we should have gotten flashbacks to sort of like how did i end up here kind of thing and answering those questions along the way and her magic is a little bit under cultivated in this book um i think that the best way for this to be better done is to have had more magic users throughout the book that she comes in contact with sort of picking up things she learns from them like maybe her magic just manifested late in life i don't really understand the magic in this world and i think that having more characters with magic to sort of like fill in the gaps for her but in that way fill in the gaps for the reader would have just to simply have more characters come along and be like blah 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 here's information i don't honestly forget that she would have it and then she'd need it for something I'd be like oh shit I forgot that that was a thing I think the best um I, I just don't really understand how like magic affects the world that she lives in and I just think in general like the magic portion could have been a lot stronger but I do think that despite the fact that I have critiques of these books like when do I not have critiques of books and, and despite the fact that I don't think that either of these series have great covers like I don't know who was putting out covers in 1998 but what is going on there <laughs> then again even Sarah J Maas is getting like newer covers and I think that they're terrible so I don't know maybe start putting readers in charge of covers y'all like publishing needs to listen to readers more so despite the fact that I don't think people are going to reach for these either of these as a cover buy I do think that what's inside of them are things that people are not doing enough in books that I would like to see more of first of all there's just not nearly enough of fantasy doing airships in my in my in my opinion I mean there's some like I can think of Winter Keep by Kristen Cashore that has airships in it and a lot of things that that appeal to me very personally but it, there's just not enough fantasy doing airships on top of that the whole idea of like a sentient resource is criminally underdone as I said and the the whole girl joining a ship dressing up as a guy like all of these reasons I would say that both of these are worth a read they're doing things that you're just not seeing enough of in fiction and I recommend both if you can slog through all 24 hours of the Robin Hobb audiobook I do think that it's worth it in like a general sense just takes a long time to get through it. For these reasons I recommend both and if you like one you might like the other so I suggest trying them both out. Let me know if, if you have any of any recs with elements that I mentioned here please leave them below because I love airships, I love skyships, and I'm just not, I don't get enough of the things that I like in books. When are the people going to write the books for me? Very specifically, I want to be catered to. <laughs> anyway, let me know if you've read either of these. Leave your comments and questions down below. Like and subscribe Subscribe if you feel like doing that. If not, that's fine too. Okay, uh, Patreon is down below if you want to join. You don't have to. Either way, that's fine. I'm just glad you're here. And uh, okay, see you next time, I guess. Bye. Hi, it is me. Can, Rachel, and I'm here to say thank you for being a friend to my therapy goals patrons and those are Alexander, Amanda, Ashley, Bubble Tea, Chris, Claire, Des Robert, DJ Krimmer, Emperor's New Blues, Eric, Harley, Jack and Jill, John E, Casey McKenzie, Kate W, Kelly K, Quinn, Lady Kitty Bug, Lek, Lula, Molly, Alice, 
Peggy Lou, Witch Bitch, Rain, Samar, Scarlet, Shiny, SMK, and Zachary. Thank you all so much for being a friend. And before I go, I have to say thank you for being a friend to my Potato Stars Marxist patrons. And those are AM Angel, Aiden, Alicia, Amanda B, Andy, Angelica, Anita, Artie the Ninth, Ashley H, Aubrey P, Ava, BB, Blythe, Bookish Barbie, Ray, Bree, Brenda, Bryn, Caitlin, Carlin, Catherine, Kathy, Chris, CJ, Colleen, Courtney, Corwin, Corey, Darren, Deborah, Diet God, Dorian, Dorotea, Ebby, Eden, Elise, Ember, Emily A, Emily L, Grace, Gracie, Hannah C, Hannah T, Harpy Kuro, Hello There Darling, Ilianaka, India Inks, JM Tenet, Jackal All Trades, J is on Olympus, JT, Jen, Jennifer T, Jenny G, Jillian, Jules, Kaylee, Kat, Katya, Kendra, Kylie, Ellen Lindbergh, Laughing Cat Dog, Laura, Lauren B, Library of Scars, Lisa, Liz, Lustful Octopus, Martin, Maddie, Marquita, Maz, Malara, Meow Meow, James, Nat, Natalie, Never, Nicole G, Nicole R, Nicole T, Nikki, Night and Binary, Page E, Page P, Fox Glove, Pixel Stars, Puratheon, Quill, Rachel, Raquel, Rat Sarah, Reba, Rebecca, Ren, Robin, Rowan, Other Rowan, Samantha, Sarah H, Sarah K, Sarah the Bear, Scarlett, Shanae, Shannon, Shayna, Sheena K, Sean, Sierra, Stephanie, Talia, Three Old Dogs, Toast, Trash Can Teddy, Sev, Valentine, and Writer A. Thank you, thank you all so much for being a friend. Mm-hmm.